See where we left off, and we get started. Let's see, is the link working? I think so. Okay, oh, gotta bring up my reference. Okay, so where we're hopefully going to get to today is, well, the first thing I need, probably need to work on is, is getting uh, the hilt, the hilt pistol grip finished, uh, then of course the trigger guard, uh, convert some of these curved mesh objects, and uh, we'll see. Okay, once again, I think about maybe two, three hours I got to go. Hey, what's going on? And um, let's see, I think maybe we can get through the high poly portion today, possibly. Let's see, how do I have this separated? Let me go into the local view. Okay, I should probably just separate out some of these parts here. This is the revolver portion and retaining rod and the little ice pick uh, bayonet thing that I created. Okay, I'm gonna separate those off. I'll just, uh, you want to close that? I'll close that for now. We'll separate a little ice pick. Okay, so this hilt portion is something that I need to kind of pay attention to detail on. So I'll bring up my reference and let's see if we can kind of look at this. Move my mic a little bit, set up my tablet. We might even have to get a few uh, sculpted details possibly. We'll see. Okay. So what we have is we've got this main metal revolver portion of the pistol pretty much complete, but that's kind of has to uh, frame around the wooden part of the hilt, so we need to create that. Hey Shankar, what's going on? All right, what's it, what does this part look like? Now I know I have a bullion object on here. So perhaps well, I don't want to I don't want to sub I don't want to put a bevel on these because then that'll mess up with the uh, with the subdivision. Hey, thanks a lot. I'm glad the tutorials are helpful. I'm trying to work on some other videos, so after I stream, I might do, uh, I mean, it's a Saturday. I probably have some time to do some video editing or something like that. All right, so let's try just working on it on this piece 
for right now. And if I need to, if I need to throw out this piece and then insert another one, we'll do that. What you waiting for? Oh, let me turn on my screencast keys. I know people appreciate those. Now that kind of messed me up here. Right, so let's, let's go back. Just extrude out a little bit, and then we'll do control extrude, control extrude, scale, shift X. It's just kind of a rough eyeball of it. If we have to adjust it manually, I guess we can do that. Scale, shift X. It's not the best looking thing, so I'm, I'm tempted to just kind of throw out this part and start it with a new one wouldn't hurt. But that does kind of roughly have the right uh, frame that I want, so maybe we can make it work. All right, can I use a shear on this? I think I can use a shear on this. No? I'll turn both of them inward. Just do it manually. And I know it's kind of kind of a rough, kind of bad topology at the moment, but let's see. All right, let's just try this. Select both of these ones, control E, let's do a bridge edge loops. Let's try to uh, bevel both of these loops here. And put an extra one in there. Of course, I'll look back at my uh, reference just to see what sort of, uh, just how round that's supposed to be. Yeah, you know, it's pretty round. I'm gonna put a center one there. Actually, drag that back a little bit. Just finesse these into place. You know, I am a bit behind the curve. I'm seeing a lot of uh, new content coming out about uh, Blender 3.0 right now. And I haven't got to check it out.
I hear the asset library tool is uh, pretty cool. I mean, that's something that I know I would probably find a lot of use for. Something that I'm more interested to check out than a lot of stuff. Let me see if I can just do a quick uh, sort of high poly on this. I'm going to go to sharpen. Let's give it a bevel. Ouch, that, be that bevel is harsh. Let's see if it doesn't hate me with this. Let's lower that even more. We'll do, what is that, half a millimeter? Uh, I don't like the way it's kind of automatically setting that up right now. Let's try to increase that angle a little bit. Now let's try giving it a subdivision. Let's hide the rest of this hilt object right there. Gonna need some work, but I think that's what I'm going for with the frame. You know what? Let me try this with a, uh, a different object. I think this one just has a, I think we need a cylinder with more, with more edges. I'm going to go ahead, create a circle. Let's do a 24 vertices, lower that size quite a bit. Go into edit mode, vertices, vertex select mode, alt Z. Bring up that reference that I have in the background. Rotate it about 90 degrees. Just get it to the right size here. About what I had. Hide everything else at the moment. Just want to kind of recreate this item here. Going into uh, X ray mode, of course. I'm using an inset to do this. Same with this little back part. I'm going to close the face there, do an inset. Keep the video up after stream. Um, I've pretty much kept up. I think I've left up all the streams I've done so far. I might uh, just put them all into a playlist so people can reference them. You can basically reference the entire... Uh, uh, Nambu Pistol playlist already. But yeah, these should all stay up. I'll probably create like some sort of archive of them. Even if I unlist them at some point, which I'm pretty sure all the streams are still, uh, are still public.
All right, so we basically got the exact same part. I'm just going to uh, do the same thing I was doing before. Let me hide this a little bit easier to see. Scale, Shift, X, kind of widen those out. Actually, maybe I should do that with something like a solidify, so they're all uh, all even thickness. Do I play games? You know, I keep um, I keep toying with the idea of playing games on stream, but right now I pretty much only play one video game ever, and. Uh, those of you who see me in Discord, you'll see just how many times a day I'm logging into Escape from Tarkov. So I have a little bit of an addiction. Who knows, could consider playing some Escape from Tarkov on stream, but it would be, uh, it'd probably be pretty boring. I am, I didn't play a whole lot for this swipe of the game, so I'm kind of a low level, and I basically wander around like a rat in the dark, and occasionally ambush other players. Alright, bridge these edge loops again. Put a edge right in between there. Alright, let's see. That kind of looks pretty good. That kind of looks pretty good. But of course, I'm going to drag that back a little bit. Same with this one. Let's bevel this center one. I don't know, that kind of Kind of move that to that little corner there. Stick with this one. Just kind of double tap G to slide them into place. We'll just get a little bit of better positioning on these uh, edge loops. Kind of match the frame that we had. Because once again, the the one that I'm working on, the one that I photographed, it's not the same one that I have uh, on this reference image in the background. The hilt is a little bit larger. A little bit different shape. So I'm basically just eyeing it from uh, from my reference. Okay, that's looking better. Okay, I'm gonna match up this little uh, boolean object I had on the previous version of this. Let's go ahead and control numpad minus, cuts that out. All right, so if I take this, go into local view. Uh, I mean, it looks okay. Okay, it's kind of cut through with that one boolean object right there. Do I want that? 
I can change it. Go add a local view. Okay, that looks okay. Now, this pistol has like some little decorative elements that I also want to try to capture. Let's see, let's bring up this reference, see if we can get a bit better look at it. All right, what are we looking at? Okay, get my reference up. All right, so this portion here is the hammer, which revolves or rotates right here, but this is not part of the hammer. It's not even, not even like a cocking mechanism or anything. I, it just seems kind of decorative. So got to figure out how to create that. What does that say? Bunch of markings on it. Love to figure out how to create all of that too, which should be fun. probably just uh, extract off a few top faces, maybe from this. I wonder if that's something that I should try sculpting. I don't know, I think I could model it pretty easily. seems fine. Uh, uh, modeling, it's... How much time would I recommend that you put into it? How much time can you put into it? Time in a day. Um... Oh, well, what do they say? They always say the uh, 10,000 hours rule or something like that. Which, I mean, there's a bunch of stuff where it's questionable whether that's really the case, but it's like a beneficial goal to shoot for. Uh, reasonably, if you want to get, you know, really good at something, put in as much time as you, as you can into it, I would assume. Um, and, and it just depends. Uh, now, of course, stud study stuff that actually helps you improve, because if you just put in, like, a bunch of time, but you're not, you know, really focused on stuff that'll really help you get better, then I don't think it really matters that much how much you, time you would put into it. But if you're really focused on learning and improving and you can kind of objectively examine your work after each project that you do to see like, oh yeah, I didn't do great at that, I messed up on this, I can do better at this, and you then focus on improving those aspects next time, then yeah, you just improve. So the faster you get through that process, 
uh, yeah, the, the faster you'll improve. But someone who doesn't focus on the process and just thinks, time, I need to crunch in, like, just ridiculous hours of time into this, uh, I mean, they're, they're not going to get anywhere fast. And heck, I've, I've been guilty of that. Just thinking that, oh, I, I just need to put to put in time sitting in front of a computer screen doing the same thing over again. It might just look weird. Yeah, it kind of does. Try okay. I'm probably need to redo this, but let's try a uh, vertex smooth vertices. Wait, I need to go in X ray mode. I didn't select all that. Alright. Let's just give this a try. Smooth vertices. Select a portion of that and then do it again. Can't tell if that needs to be bigger. Essentially inflate it. Let's try that from an active element. Let's select that one vertice you used. No, 
selecting bounding box center one active element to scale it too much Just kind of iron to get the portion on that right. I don't know, I feel that needs to be bigger. How can I get good at edge flow? I somehow learned to solve the topology, but I can't figure out how to change the edge flow without affecting the topology. Well, topology can be uh, kind of tricky. I know there's some good hard surface courses that you can look at to focus more on that. I know that I know that I frequently ran into the problems where, you know, I'm trying, I'm trying to work on my topology and uh, you keep either creating topology that has uh, spirals and how it's connected when you try to, you know, subdivide or create edge loops on it. And sometimes you need to figure out how to effectively kind of triage things between switching between where you can put a triangle and where you really probably shouldn't put a triangle. Topology is something that takes just a lot of continued practice and uh, research and it kind of plays into what I was kind of mentioning earlier about just intentional practice and studying. Let's mirror this part. Your models that you've uh, uploaded to Sketchfab. Um, well, you can go. I have a link in the description below to my Discord server, and there is a lot of uh, art sharing sections in there, and uh, places where you can ask for a critique or uh, get help if you're having any issues that you need to try and uh, uh, fix something. So I suggest uh, checking those out. Also, if you post them in the Discord and let me know, I probably would be able to go ahead and take a look at it. Kind of finesse the angle on this real quick. Alright, that seems pretty... Is that accurate enough? Actually, this whole thing needs to kind of be dragged back a little bit. So let's grab these, G, Y. That's more of a correct position right there. All right, and that Boolean object is working. Let's look at this barrel portion. Okay. Most of that seems pretty good, and we cleaned up all the... Uh, and gons on these, which we did with a boolean object. We got the primers, and if I go out of here, let me just hide this. We got the primer caps on everything. Let's uh, work on this hammer a little bit.
As a beginner, what should you start modeling? Well, I'm pretty sure that you're probably all already familiar with uh, with Blender Guru. And you should probably go ahead and create the donut. In fact, I think Blender Guru just did a new beginner getting started guide for Blender 3.0. So if you want to get a, um, a heads up or a leg in on a Blender 3.0, Definitely check out Blender Guru's new tutorial. That's kind of like the perfect uh, starting point that I would recommend. Okay, actually, let's move. Let's line up this hammer with the uh, primer cap right there. All right, let me go into local view. But yeah, model the uh, model a donut, model a chair, uh, and model an anvil. Those are like the basic uh, beginner blender tutorials that everyone should probably take a whack at. After that, if you're looking to get into something specific, uh, look up a beginner tutorial for that. So for me, it was. Um, uh, Chomfer Zone, which has a good YouTube channel, uh, several free tutorials and several really good uh, paid tutorials, all on weapon design. So, like a free tutorial of his is something like creating a grenade, and he has ones for 3ds Max, and he has ones for Blender now, which are all really good. In fact, when uh, I first found him, he hadn't created any content for uh, for Blender. And I, and it was a good challenge for me because I watched a tutorial that he did in 3ds Max, and I basically learned how to translate everything that he was doing uh, into Blender. And it was a good way for me to understand how other uh, 3D applications work, and to kind of challenge myself to see if I could find all the same tools in the uh, application that I was using. You know what? I, I don't mind uh, taking a look at it real quick. I'll see if I, I'll see if I bring it up. All right, so I'm taking a look at some of your uh, 3D weapons models. So I'm looking at a few things like your uh, Pulp uh, 9mm SMG, the one that kind of looks uh, most completed to me. In fact, you got some really really good things. You got like two variations here. You want me to bring it up on stream? I don't mind uh, showing it on stream. Taking a look at a few more of these. So I'm assuming that you're already using uh, 
substance painter. So you're trying to get proficient with substance painter. You're working on learning your PBR materials, all right. Now Sketchfab is pretty good. Sketchfab is a good place to kind of show off uh, your 3D models, but I mean, I'll also ask, do you have a um, an art station portfolio? Do you have other uh, renders of your weapon designs and stuff like that? So I'll bring up, let me see what I can bring up here. I'll bring up the one that I like, which is the uh, two Holt uh, 9mm SMGs. Okay, so this is, I'm assuming this is your work, right? Now these look really pretty good. In fact, I like going to uh, model inspection. I'm going to look at, let's see, can we look at a wireframe? Okay. Now topology looks really pretty good. Now you did export this to Sketchfab with a number of uh, N-Gons. And generally I would say that whenever you're going to export something, it's a good idea to triangulate everything, especially when it goes to a uh, game engine. But ultimately, uh, the way you used N-Gons came out looks looking really pretty good. I'm pretty sure Sketchfab maybe does some triangulation kind of behind the scenes. No, not this. Which one then? Is this, uh... Am I on the wrong page here? I'm following the link that you sent in the uh, Discord. Is it just this one? Okay, I'm assuming. I've tried modeling a gun as one object. It didn't go well, but I see you using different objects for this one gun. Is this way better and forgiving? Well, I mean, a weapon is made up of many multiple objects. Uh, so obviously if you're going to be working on a weapon design, you've got to clearly separate and define each object in part. Now, of course, being if you're modeling for a video game or something, you're probably not concerned with uh, creating all the internals of a weapon to completely build out the functionality, although you can do that, and that would look uh, really good as a portfolio piece. It would show that you have a, a very thorough technical understanding of how to create something. But um, I don't know, I keep seeing people posting this whole thing of like, I tried to create everything as one object, I merged everything into one object. Um, I haven't really seen a workflow like that. I mean, even when it comes to your texturing and baking, you kind of need to be able to separate uh, out all the objects to, uh, to establish all your different materials and stuff.
So, I mean, basically, I mean, there are certain parts where I'll create them and if I'm not worried about like textures kind of getting baked onto each other, if it's not something that's gonna bother me too much in my workflow, yeah, I'll group certain object, I'll group objects into a single object. But otherwise, yeah, pretty much everything I try to separate and split off and uh, make their own object within reason. Okay, now I, I hope you don't mind me going back to who was it was asking about their gun design. I think it was this one. Oh, that is a... Uh... That was really dense. I was wondering if it was a baked, uh, baked normal. But no, it looks like this would be something close to a uh, high. Yeah, this would be a probably more of your high poly if you were just using subdivision and bevel, a subdivision and bevel workflow. But. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, this is a pretty decent high poly uh, weapon for just using uh, bevel and and subdivision. Although I can kind of tell that even the way this is subdivided, how you're trying to connect everything up, and there might definitely looks like there might be a few issues when it comes to your edge flow on everything but this wouldn't i mean this would it's pretty cool and a good progress for a for a high poly design but this wouldn't be able to be used in a uh, game engine for much uh because it's just too dense it's just um yeah and i'm looking down here you have you have almost three million triangles and 1.4 million vertices. Now, even in Call of Duty, even in Warzone and everything, your highest resolution model that you're gonna see, like in the player's uh, viewport, those still only range from maybe at max 60,000, usually less than 100,000 vertices. And that's a low poly because basically they create a very dense geometric model like this and then all that detail has to basically get baked down into the texture maps that are projected on the low poly of the weapon and then that's, then that's where you get into things like marmoset tool bag substance painter and all your texturing applications but for a start this is a this is a good start you know keep practicing with this sort of stuff you definitely got the gist of a uh, well modeling you're, you're definitely uh, got a lot of good modeling skills in here, and you'll definitely improve. So really, uh, thanks for sharing. And we're going to basically, hopefully, if I can, uh, get to the same point where we have a very high poly model on, uh, on this here. But then all of that has to uh, get down resonance to the low poly, unwrapped, and then all the high poly has to get all the, we have to bake down all the details. I know, mouthful, but let's get back to work. This is the old part, I don't like that one. Uh, let's make like a, just hide that. Where did the part go? Did I miss something? There it goes. Uh, yeah, in this project and all my assets, I work from low to high. And you shared your art station in the Discord.
Okay, yeah, so you clearly understand all the uh, substance painter and texturing workflow. In fact, it's really a very good tutorial. I mean, a very good uh, portfolio. I'm looking at the uh, SIG MCX model. It's really good. It's really cool that you got um, so many parts model and you're showing all the uh, customization options. That is really good. You've got a little uh, turnable video preview, which is good. I like the crossbow design and everything you're, and you're also using a ZBrush remesh workflow is looking really good. Really like that uh, crossbow design. You also diversify it up a little bit. I see you have like little uh, armor, sci-fi armor suit character bust, which is cool. And I also really like, um, I like the vehicles. I would say maybe uh maybe try creating creating some uh some different types of renders. Maybe putting like one of your weapons in a small scene or something or uh doing something maybe a little little different with your lighting setups in your renders for one that I notice. Um Oh, you got a marmoset preview on this one. Here, look. I know, I know your people are probably bored with what you're looking at on stream. Let me bring this up over on the other screen. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, your portfolio looks really, really pretty good. And it's got kind of that good mix of where people know what your skill set is. That you're really good at the hard surface stuff, the vehicles, the weapon design, all that. Um, like you say, hard surface practice on, on this. Yeah, the, that's the one thing, as I say, you know, like these are good models, but some of the renders need to be punched up a little bit like this is a really good model but you I, I say it would be so it would look so much better in your portfolio if you had some uh some better yeah some, some slightly better renders with it if you can either just uh make a really small scene with it or punch up the lighting to where you're getting maybe some interesting high saturated lighting from a few areas. I mean, look up, once again, I think I, just, I mentioned um, Chomper Zone not too long ago, and he has free tutorials on his YouTube for several projects on how to create really nice, really high quality renders in a, a Marmoset. And that's kind of the go-to standard for for creating your portfolio renders. So I definitely recommend checking out, but see, you got this good stuff. You got like these turnable animations and you've got multiple different views and you have your high poly renders and all that. And once again, this isn't stuff that I'm like the best at either, because like I said, I've said before, I think on last stream, I don't think my uh, my portfolio is really one that's like uh, up to snuff at all either. 
So everybody can use some improvement at it. All right. So I think I'm going to create this uh, center part to be the, the wooden hilt. I'm just going to adjust these uh, edge rings a little bit more on them. I know I was working on something else before this, but it doesn't matter. S, Shift, X. I don't want to be on active element anymore. Rotate that just a little bit. No. Hey, Marga. How long have I been going for? Ah, oh, not that long. You know, I've been doing weapons for a little while. And, yeah, at this point, I can kind of say been one of my main focuses, especially when it comes to this YouTube channel. Even though I have yet to really credit myself on any major projects as, as a weapon designer in any way, at least nothing that has <laughs> got released. Hey, so Hal, popping in a little bit later. I thought you'd be asleep by now. It's 
not looking half bad. I don't know that hilt needs a little bit more work. In fact, I should probably just... I don't know, erase this object. Miss anything? No? Typical stream so far. Talking, chatting, a little bit of feedback. Yeah, well, you know, I don't even really consider myself to be, like, primarily a non-destructive artist when it comes to working in 3D. But I do, I do like to, you know, try to get as much done, especially early on, at least in a non-destructive or semi-non-destructive uh, workflow, is it's definitely uh, beneficial. Maybe I might know a better way to do that. Spent over an hour trying to solve one bug in programming as part of a university project. That sucks. That really sucks. And now, I mean, I probably can't give much advice there, but I know with what little bit of um, anything programming intensive I've tried to do, <laughs> uh... I have to sleep on it. Especially if it was an issue that was like driving me crazy all day long. It seems like if I just go to sleep on it and for some reason, yeah, your brain will just work it out in your sleep and I'll wake up and I'm like, damn it, it was so freaking simple the whole time. I don't know if that's something a lot of people get, but do programming long enough, you start dreaming in code. These are here. One, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's six on each side. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna go for the process of just like matching all of these up real quick.
see if this is going to work like I think. I don't know if I can match all of those up to the exact same amount. Okay. How many do I have to do? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Sure, there's probably another way I'm missing here. Excited about the whole uh, Cycles X thing? Yeah, I mean, there's probably a lot of cool things that'll come out of that. I don't know, I, I still see myself using Eevee for the time being. I'd like to explore kind of what Cycles X has to offer. But once again, I'm not sure if that's something I would really use a whole bunch, at least for my own, at least for my own workflow. Still, it could have, uh, Cycles X could probably have a lot of uh, really cool potential for uh, some of the concepting workflows when it comes to getting some really interesting rendering. And that's something that um, I might want to start talking about soon on my channel is just uh, sort of concept art 3D design. Kind of a weird way to go about doing some of this, but right now I have a pretty good idea of where I'm going with this. Yeah, let's we'll see how it goes. Might be a better way that I should probably be uh, creating some of this. Yeah, why, why do I relate to that sentiment as well? Uh, doing concept art as a means of stress relief. Is that a good thing? I think I was talking about on uh, last stream about how I, what I like about, um, I guess kind of more 
2D art or drawing or concept art, whether you're using 3D or not, is that it just always felt like I was able to get, you were able to get a complete set of ideas out faster. I mean, that's kind of the point of a concept art and why it's relevant to production. But it's also definitely why I probably consider that I enjoy it quite a bit more. For the, I mean, for the most part. I don't know. I don't know if I would say I enjoy concept art or drawing more. But I definitely relate to the whole uh, uh, relaxation factor of it. that up. Oh, that's because those are not connected. So let me just uh, subdivide you. Merge you to Same thing over here. Like we'll have to do some other editing on this as well. Let's flip those. All right, obviously need a little bit of adjustment here. I want to break up that triangle. I do really want to break up that triangle. That looks bad. That end gun, just redo those faces. All right, now this part needs to basically get smoothed out. Is that connected properly? Should be. Oh, I see. Yeah, there's an end gun in there as well.
Let's get into local view, just... to proportional editing. Let's do vertis, vertex select. I want to unselect those. All right, hit O for proportional editing. Let's drag some of that out. All right, that's looking a little bit. Let's go out of local view. I don't know, is it looking too garbled? Hide that again, select this part. Now what happens if deselect some of those? Deselect deselect that and smooth it a little bit. What if we Look, those. All right, let's just move that section right there. This does not need to have that boolean on there for that. That's from another object. All right. I think that's looking a little bit better. Proportional. Turn off active element. Go back to our regular. I think it's starting to look a little bit better right there. Okay, that's looking a bit... Yeah, that's looking smoother. I'm okay with some of this because that's kind of... Kind of pretty accurate to the hilt shape. I don't know, I think I should still smooth it out. In fact, I should prop... Maybe I can just... First, of course, hit a save. Actually in sculpt mode, I don't want symmetry on because we got we have the mirror modifier. Now what if I actually just hit it with an actual smooth? Let's 
just tapping it with that smooth brush. I don't want to don't want it to change that edge location. I'd like to mask those. Close this object here. What happens if I do a uh, grid fill? It creates something that looks a little bit garbly there. All right, so let me try it with these uh, selecting these edges. See if I can close it that way. This stuff needs to be airtight and closed if we're doing a if we're doing a remesh workflow. That works better. That's just so that those will uh, remesh properly afterwards. Or, what I probably should have done. Smack the clipping on. Let's turn off that merge. course creates a whole lot less vertices for us to mess with. Alright, good. View. All right. Let's say that's somewhat complete. Just looking at my reference. The bridge function. Talking about using uh, the the uh, symmetry, the mirror modifier.
Uh, bridge edge loops, I see you prefer to manually create and extrude edges, so... I just wonder if the preference... Uh, it, it depends. I mean, if I can see that, you know, I have a... If the uh, number of uh, edges or vertices match up from one side to another, yeah, you use bridge edge loop. But like I was doing with the uh, mirror, it's just extruding off to the other side and with uh, clipping on so that they all match up. Um, I mean, there are a lot of ways that you can kind of damage your mesh, or like I did with that uh, grid fill, where it kind of made some weird topology right there. Uh, not too worried about that, because that's just to uh, close that and create an airtight mesh for when we're doing our high poly later on and we have to remesh it. Because if it's not, if it has any open holes, then the remesh is going to just kind of garble up uh, the entire mesh. But ultimately on the low poly, that that part's not even seen. I could even delete the, that section of faces um, if I wanted to. I don't think I even want to uh, like create the rest of this hammer part where it's rotating. I don't know how visible that has to be, but it might be a little bit important to do, so... Let's go ahead and just create it anyways. Make it more accurate. Part doesn't have any modifiers on it. Okay, that's good. That's a huge cylinder. Let's do. Hmm. Maybe a 16 vertice. Do 0.1, 0.2. Rotate that. Yeah, I still have active element on. Don't want that. I'll just build it. No problem with that.
Okay, there's a little bit of a bevel on the top of this. Thing. Yeah. In fact, are these two separate parts? I'm trying I'm trying to closely examine it. There's a little bit of an extrusion here. Oh, we got an end gun of some sort. What's this? Where are these? One, two. Oh, what's that? Something's not matched up there. Do a by distance. All right, yeah, I got rid of three vertices by doing that. So let's see, a little bit of an extrusion here. Actually, there's more of a curve to this one part. Back to active element, make those flush right there. Is that what I want? No. Slide those vertices just a little bit. Now, what I also want to do. All right, all right, let's see. What else needs to be modeled? Okay, now it's got these little uh, screws on in several areas, which are ultimately uh, gonna get done probably as a bake detail on the low poly, but that's something that we might need to have on our ID map so we know how to, um, or so that we're able to uh, apply just a metallic material to some of the screws.
And like I said, the interesting part of doing this design will come later on when we're basically trying to get all this uh, engraving detail. And there's a lot of different material separation between these uh, different types of metals, the kind of varnish polish on the hilt, on this wood hilt. Um, this sort of oil polish sheen on the barrel section. That's going to be interesting to get. Oh, let's go ahead and do that trigger guard next. Start converting, uh, start converting this to a mesh. All right, so let's see. That's a curve object currently. It's going to be pretty dense, so let's go ahead and object convert to, oh wait, select it, object convert to mesh. Go into edit mode. Uh, we can kind of delete every other one of these edge loops. Dissolve edge. Same with the inside, every other one. Uh, yeah, yeah, probably going to be uh, a lot of work in substance, but that's why I chose that's why I chose this model is because it provided a, it presented a lot of interesting challenges, most of them to do with texturing. And when it comes to anything 3D modeling, texturing is still like my favorite part in the process. So if I was going to pick another weapon design to do, is going to be something that I could really uh, dig into the texturing on. Trying to look at a reference of uh, how this trigger guard is integrated into the gun. If we can, uh, do I need to give this a little extra thickness on this trigger guard? Maybe. So let's try selecting those. Let's uh, select edge rings. Okay. Uh, scale shift. No, let's do individual origin. Scale shift X. Just to uh, give it a little more girth. Oh yeah, I mean, I don't think I'm mastermind when it comes to texturing either, so obviously the solution for that is to uh, pick something that would be possibly very difficult to texture. off the page there.
That's looking okay. Would it be bad to separate the bottom faces, divide, uh, divide to match the division in your loops, and then bridge the faces? I'm not. I'm not exactly sure what you mean. I mean, there's certainly ways you could work on a uh, given part if you know you can match up your topology uh, well enough to where things are going to match up just right, then yeah, I mean, depends on what you're working on, it would probably work. to work on this a little bit too. Actually adjust uh, the curve object. Switch back to median point. Let's uh, shrink it down, bring it down a little bit. It's got really much more of an intense curve to it. I should probably create a uh, boolean on this part of the revolver just for where that trigger mechanism goes in. Alright, so do that before we convert it. Separate the bottom faces that will touch the uh, trigger guard. Divide those faces so that they match topology of the trigger guard. I see what you mean, but the trigger guard is its own uh, separate part that is ultimately uh, screwed on to the main frame of the pistol right here. It's not actually um, like just an integrated part of the frame. It's, it is mechanically uh, screwed on. And like I said, uh, for the trigger mechanism, I'm still going to make a uh, some sort of insert or a boolean right here for where the uh, trigger goes into the frame. But yes, I, I, see what you, I see what you mean that if this was um, like if this metal was actually crafted to where this and this ant were just one part yeah, I would definitely want to go for the process of um, matching everything up 
the word that's apology just flowed from one part to the other. And I see what you mean, how it kind of clips into here uh, right now. How that doesn't look good. I'm still going to do some adjustment on that. But it was like the same with, uh, like I was doing with uh, creating this frame around the hilt. So how we extruded all of this out around the hilt of the pistol because all of this part of the frame is uh, one part. So basically, I'm, just, I'm still just kind of trying to closely examine going off of a limited reference to make sure I know exactly what I'm building. Let's go to proportional editing and just uh, make that a little bit wider. All right, and I think we can go ahead and convert this to a mesh. Right, right, I see what you mean. Once again, we'll go ahead and we'll delete, dissolve every other edge. Same on this side. Go ahead and close it off. I'm trying to get a good look at this trigger on a few different models. Because there are a lot of different uh, trigger shapes on this. So, what, okay, so what it needs to look like more... is it has the crescent and then the rest of it goes up into the frame like that. But it's, it's kind of hard to see on the on the one I photographed except for right there. So yeah, just kind of very kind of slim trigger mechanism crescent right there, which is latched on, but it's not, it's not like these ones. Go ahead and close that off as well. Turn off proportional editing. I'm just gonna shrink that a little bit. I think we can do that with these ones as well. Scale, scale, shift X. And make it taper just a little bit, okay. button. Alright, let's see. I 
Actually, this could kind of get matched up to maybe another cylindrical object. In fact, this kind of needs to be a little bit more narrow. All right, so maybe I want to resolve another set of these. And we can even just go ahead and delete the half of this. Do it with symmetry since that's what we're going to be using. I don't mind turning on clipping right there. Adjusting that edge loop a little bit. Alright, so let's say that there's going to be a cylinder portion. We can do, let's try first a uh, 12 vertices. Loud jet flying over. So if we delete those faces, and then maybe three of these faces, that accurate enough, do another one. Seems a little bit more accurate. Move that up just a little bit. That's kind of, yeah, that's the shape. All right. That matches up to the reference pretty well. But I actually want to... Give this just a little bit of a, sort of a bevel that pops out right here. Let's see, and if we can, uh... So we move this on the all right that's good the whole whole thing should probably be scaled a little bit use active element just so that it scales from that point. Switch off of normal. And 
bounding box center. We want active element. And basically, same with this is getting, which is basically just us. It's screwed in to the frame of the revolver right here. So I'm gonna go ahead, delete that, the faces. And how many, how many vertices are on this? So there's, that's five. Let's see, edges, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven, six, <laughs> six, all right. She has kind of a separate screw ball. All right, cylinder. You know, and we were talking about um, kind of concept art earlier, and uh, you know that's kind of kind of a good idea to have with like some of the uh, challenges that we're doing on the Discord right now. That you can basically use anything you want to. Well, you know, you don't have to keep it to be you don't have to have it be a strictly like a game asset like a uh, design pipeline for what you're going to create yes it's a 3d art challenge but uh you know if you're creating something entirely in blender with uh procedural materials or whatever and you create a really good scene in eevee well might be a whole lot more effective And what's today? Today's the 4th, so less than... What did I put as the end date of the challenge? It's less than a week until uh, the current Crafty Assassin challenge is over. Yeah, uh, a little more than a week away. Okay, cool. And after that, we'll hopefully get into the, uh, into the next one. Okay, so maybe we can start seeing how parts look pretty soon with some high poly modifiers on them. Okay, let's just go ahead and uh, create this other little bottom Boolean part. Drag you off.
that won't be too hard to close up. Unless we just do it from here. Nah, it's better to use a boolean right there. Plus we can just easily collapse it and then triangulate that hole. Now, uh, I know we're pretty far along with the modeling portion, so I'm just getting curious. I'm getting curious to see how uh, some of the, this looks as a high poly. But maybe that means I need to... No, I already collapsed those bullions, so uh, maybe we go ahead and work on this barrel portion right here. This doesn't have any internal faces, does it? Shouldn't. I'm worried about turning on clipping right now because it does this weird thing where it tries to kind of merge some of the vertices around this edge right here. So let's go on with this. All right, so I'm gonna hit. Oh yeah. We'll hit sharpen. I mean, looks all right. We'll add a few to this. It got all of those, that's a good job. All right, Blender did something all right automatically. Gonna undo those. What does this one look like? Is there an internal face there? That one looks kind of sharp. All right, let's go for it right now. Now let's give it the bevel. Give you an extra zero, make you about half a millimeter. That's still way too much. Say a fifth of a millimeter. Switch you to weight. Let's see if remesh handles this. I'm just curious. All right, let's try a subdivision. Let's hit that clipping. like me at the moment. All right, well, that seemed to make our mesh a little bit more airtight right there. All right, now let's go ahead and we do remesh at this point.
All right, I'm expecting my computer to start slowing down a little bit, so let's see how well it handles some of this. Turns it into one simple voxel. Let's give it, let's divide that a whole bunch more. Let's divide that even more. A little bit better. So let's see. Let's turn on statistics. See how we're. Uh, and of course, we'll hit a save so we don't lose anything if Blender decides to crap out on us. Ooh, what did I do? That's not good. Oh wait, we're at the max here. It's not looking all too good at the moment. Let's give that a, uh, what a smooth corrective. Say only smooth. Let's do a repeat factor of maybe 25. Let's we'll see if what happens if we up that. Maybe a little lower. Let's try 15. All right, and then let's give that, see how well that handles a decimate, and decimate is usually what takes the longest in my modifier stack. And hit save again. All right, let's try it. One tenth. which should take this barrel section from 4 million to 400,000 triangles. I don't know if the stream's starting to look a little bit laggy or anything, but sometimes doing this processor intensive stuff can make it uh, lag behind a little bit. But it looks like it's holding up right now. Okay. That went successfully. So if we go... Okay. And uh, let's go ahead, turn on, all right, auto smooths on. Let's do that at 180 degrees. Even that's gonna take a few seconds to update. This is why you wanna invest in good hardware, kids. I think I'm going on an eighth generation uh, Intel i7, a pretty good one too. But just because Blender's free does not mean you want to skimp on hardware. Even using free open source software it can definitely benefit to have uh, as much power as you can possibly put in your computer.
All right, this thing's still. All right, there it goes. There it goes. All right, and on top of all this, all right, let's toggle the stack. Let's add one more, uh, I think, weighted normals that we add. When you have that many, uh, that many modifiers, yeah, it's gonna take its time. And like, I'm going back to Blender, and it's like, oh, please don't click on me again. And I've seen people commenting. Uh, I've seen people commenting this in the Discord. It's like, when you're waiting for it to do these massive operations, don't touch Blender because you start going in here and you start rapidly clicking while it's trying to handle something like this, it will crash on you. It'll it'll have an auto save file. You won't really lose anything, but, uh, yeah, it'll crash on you. Okay. And weighted normals made things look kind of messed up. Okay. Well, how about this? I think the weighted normal maybe needs to go before the decimate. That's going to take a little while to process. Hey, what's going on? Not much, just uh, kind of hacking through this new weapon model project. Just having some fun right now. I think I'll probably get off in a little while. Did that go? I don't think that went yet. No, that didn't go yet. It's still trying to handle everything. Still trying to process that little change I made in the modifier stack right there. That's why you always have to kind of save a uh, decimate for last. Okay, that worked. That that uh seems like it worked uh, better. Might still be something I have to handle if some of this faceting. Go add a local view. All right, but that's pretty accurate. Now, everything else is pretty much blocked out. And we'll probably do the rematch stuff on all of them, but at least on stream, I might just handle... Uh, I might just handle some of the other rematch stuff off stream. You get the gist of it. I'm going to be handling all these heavy uh, modifiers and waiting for Blender to say, okay, I'm good, you can you can interface with me again. Because blocking up all the parts is already complete. So this is looking good. I should, like I said, I should probably put those 
uh, screws on that, even though those are mostly just going to be a uh, float detail. Let's go ahead and let's do a bevel. Lower that to, uh, that's about right, but let's do it about half a millimeter. All right, and then add that subdivision. And then it'll have to be manually touched up afterwards, but it's good for now. Okay, same with uh, this smooth object. Let's do a sharpen. That looks okay. Let's add the bevel. half a millimeter maybe even less yeah if you have a question go ahead get it out before I log off or anything I can switch that to wait and we'll add a subdivision we'll do two levels same with this one let's do two levels of subdivision Why don't English writers make any spelling mistakes? I'm guessing this is the setup of a joke. Or is that a cue for me to check something in my description or my title or something? Because I constantly make uh, tons of spelling mistakes on stuff. You guys have all noticed. But I know, I speak English gooders. If we do see if we do a lot of the uh, modifier operations from the hard ups menus, a lot of them are already pretty well uh, optimized to what we want. Like this has our two levels of subdivision. Okay, what about this? We need to put some uh, mark that, mark that. Did that go right? Alright, this is one thing that I get... Huh, I thought I've had this adjusted, so... Like, if you're getting this, where you're trying to look close up at something, and it's just clipping, let's, uh, let's fix that. View, alright. Clip start. Just divide this even more. I thought I had it set, set to this by default, but I guess I didn't. Alright, so, like that, it's not going to be clipping when you're zooming in really close to stuff. Oh, thanks. Looking at my art station. 
try to do decent on a lot of that stuff, but still, like, like, like I've said, I don't think... I don't think, like, my portfolio is even really a great example of, like, a industry quality get hired portfolio. Hey, thanks, Cal. How's it going? All right, like this hilt here, I know we're gonna have to go for the full uh, remesh workflow on that, but I'm going to save that for later. All right, cool, cool. Good luck on uh, your weapons project. Uh, if you want to sh ever share anything, feel free to uh, check out the Discord. Am I available? Uh, am I available for hire? Uh, working, you're you're working on a game, and you're interested in, in my portfolio. Well, uh, I don't know if I'm really available right now for any other uh, like freelance work. Uh, but once again, also if you're if you're interested in looking for people, I'll mention again uh, my Discord server, and there is a section in there where you can post if you're looking for people to join a, a game project or a team of some sort. Um, it's a it's a pretty growing good it's a pretty good growing Discord community about. 200 or so people in there. And I'm sure there are people who would uh, at least really uh, be interested in hearing about whatever project you're trying to recruit for. They'll hear you out at least. Okay, so this, this part needs to be adjusted. It's not in the right position anymore. Let's uh, move that forward. I'm gonna select this face. I'm gonna go into active element again. And I'm just gonna scale that back a little bit. Scale it down to. That's better. Okay, let's go into local view on this part. I want to select those uh, edges. That went all the way around, good. That fully connected. Let's go ahead and just mark that. Actually, let's do a sharpen. All right, and sharpen automatically marked everything else that I wanted. Okay. And just for the time being, I'll give that that very slight bevel for some edge retention. Wait, something else. Oh, set it to weight. And then give it a double subdivision. Oh, what's that? Did I select everything? It's like selected both the barrel and all that. Yeah, that's not what I wanted. All right, it's gonna just take a second as I'm trying to switch out of out of edit mode. 
Yeah, it selected like all these parts. All right, remind me to save after Blender figures out what it's doing. Same with this, we'll do a sharpen, a bevel, lower that bevel extremely. Is there anything that it missed? Doesn't look like it, seems okay. these as well. Do I want to? Yeah. Just so that it subdivides properly. this sometime where it doesn't do in a complete circle only marking a few edges and same right here mark all of that please bit of faceting on some parts but I think the uh, remesh will take care of that out of local view and do that now something's with this uh, boolean at the moment is boolean working like it should doesn't look like it's actually cutting for this object. Oh wait, there's something else in there. something that I manually need to clean up uh, later on because of the bevel and subdivision. Okay, that's okay. Just make a note to do that later. Does any part of this need to be sharp? Looks a little odd. shooting off right there. Let's see. Can I turn on clipping? Turn off that merge. 
That seems to fix it somewhat. What happens if I... for right now for placeholders of just starting our high poly work. All right, and like I said, we needed to make those uh, lip details. And essentially it's just one type of a uh, flathead screw that we need to uh, instance around all over the place. So we'll go ahead and yeah, we'll just create that. And then that's gonna have to basically get joined to a lot of these other parts. I will do a circle. Uh, it can be 24 vertices, I think, because it's just gonna be Float detail. I might as well do 12. Edit mode. Shrink it. Rotate that on the Y 90 degrees. Yeah, I do want to do a 24 vert circle instead. I was wrong. If you're doing, for, if you're doing something for high poly, make it high poly. Just a very, uh, very simple flathead. Medium point the L and Z just so it has a little bit of a, a little bit of normal information for us to look at. Sharpen bevel. I love it when bevel goes crazy like that. All 
Exactly, and on top of that, it needs... It needs a little extra kind of a, a bevel around, around the screw on each of these. Why am I not seeing my subdivision? Where's it at? Aha. Yeah, yeah. When you first start out with the whole bevel and subdivision, you uh, give yourself a lot of headaches. This is true. Flip the normals on that, so now this part has a little bevel lip around each of them. Flatter because it just needs to kind of show up on the surface. Just looking at my reference to kind of get the idea of the uh, spacing on these. Let's uh, select both. I'm gonna do uh, scale on individual origin. This is uh this is Harris Heller's uh synth uh stream beat. Some of them are actually like really good. I'm I'm surprised. I mean I, I start out with just kind of the basic, you know, lo-fi playlist. But it's it's you know it's it's music that's fairly real that's a uh, royalty free that you can just play over at your streams. And he's sourced a whole bunch of this stuff in I don't know, some of the synth stuff is not bad, really. It's impressive. I don't know, maybe I'm giving this too much of a kind of a bevel lip right here. Yeah, synth, uh, synth for modeling is just, yeah, that, that's how you get in your groove. That's heaven right there. And I know these are just kind of going to show up on the outside, but these will all get removed uh, from the low poly. There's quite a few of these screws actually on this. Different placement and such. Let's go out of normal. This one gets dragged forward a little bit. Drag up another one.
<laughs> Honestly, though, when I'm I'm working a lot, I often don't uh, often I'm I'm not listening to music like at all. I don't know what it is. I used to listen to music all the time uh, when I worked, and then for some reason I just kind of stopped. Uh, I'll listen to a lot more, um, I guess, podcasts and audiobooks sometimes. But I don't know. It's weird. I'm one of those one of those psychos who will actually work in complete silence for a long time. There's a weird pinching going on right there. I'll have to fix that later. See, that's a little too, a little too much pop for me. Let's see yet. Anything else? Same thing with uh, listening to music. It's actually weird when I, uh, whenever I do any exercise or workout at all, I actually don't listen to anything. I don't know why it seemed, I used to, and then it just seemed like the Bluetooth earbuds were like just too much of an inconvenience to me and I just stopped. side see if there's any uh I don't really have a whole lot of reference for the other side except for what I can look at on some of these other models but it seems about the same let's go ahead and uh actually undo those last few steps separate these ones and then with this one I'll add the mirror and it also has to be one down here too I still I still think maybe I have to change the uh, the shape of this trigger guard a little bit just based on uh, my reference, I'm trying to look at this. Maybe. Let's rotate. Am I on individual origin? Let's go back to medium point. Let's uh, rotate it Y 90 degrees. Uh, now opposite direction to rotate Y 180 degrees. Let's go into X-ray view, just gonna get that lined up in the center. Scale it. Hey, thanks a lot for dropping in. I'm probably going to be ending the stream pretty soon anyways. Uh, Got to get something to eat or s some food in me. And uh, probably in another day or two, do another one. Seems to be going pretty good and we got a 
This is my third one I've done this week, so hopefully there'll be quite a bit more of this to come. But thanks for dropping in, really. Because we are basically finished. Basically finished with the high poly. Now, like I said, I'm probably going to handle some of the the whole really high poly intensive remesh workflow stuff off stream just because that's just going to be me applying modifiers and waiting for Blender to uh, respond and then cleaning up a few N-Gons and other little technical things and uh, after that we're probably going to do the down res of uh, generating the low poly and unwrapping it so we can get to Substance Painter hopefully pretty soon. So add a, I'll just add a few more things and uh, we'll wrap it up pretty soon here. Glad the music selection's decent. It, it makes it worth the, uh, uh, I guess the free month of uh, YouTube music that I'm streaming it on. It's royalty free stuff, but it sounds, I mean, it sounds fairly, fairly akin to the uh, synth stuff I like to listen to throughout the rest of the day. I gotta check, maybe we can just sort out a playlist of just, uh, just the heavier synth stuff and listen to that on stream. Okay, all right. You know what? I think I'll be able to close it there. And log off. All right, that was pretty good. Made a lot of progress. And uh, I bet we'll finish it up it's probably sometime next week. All right. Hey, had a lot of people drop in on stream today. That was pretty good. Everyone who's been asking for feedback, uh, I hope you got some good feedback, and if you're interested, go ahead and check out the uh, Discord server if you're looking to share some of your artwork and get more uh, get more advice. If you have any technical issues, there's a lot of 
a lot of good sections in there to get some critique or feedback on how to fix anything that you're working on. So please feel free to check that out. And we'll probably have uh, later, I think week after next is when we're going to probably be starting a new challenge. All right. See you so hell. See you everyone else. Have a good one. Thank mm -hmm. you.